Well, it's been a little over a week now, so that means obligatory thoughts on the latest Pokemon slash Nintendo video. <laughs> <laughs> so we did do okay. our live stream where we talked about what we thought like when we first got it, but... Um... And, not, and it's not spoilery as possible, but this is going to be spoiled to high hell, so if you haven't played the game yet or aren't done... Yeah. Uh, no, how about this? Um, scrub through the video so it thinks that you watched the whole thing, and then then click off. Okay, that's, yeah. that's good. Add money. Please. It is November. <laughs> it would would help the yeah. ad rates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, today it's me, Ted, and Mr. Game Explained Derek. Mr. Game Explained. Uh, yeah, John, <laughs> John is busy preparing for a Final Fantasy XIV BSC Free Company thing, and Lewis just hasn't played the game yet, so. Yeah. <laughs> We know who so, the Mr. real Pokemon yeah. fans are. <laughs> well, says Mr. Game Explained, the special guy who got a review copy. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. It was I was completely up in the air whether or not I'd get that review copy or not. It was back and forth, and by the time... Like, I was expecting them to give me, oh, you know, two weeks for an RPG. No, I think I got five days before the embargo was up. So uh, Thankfully, I'm the mer- game's not super long, so you you wouldn't... You weren't that screwed, but uh, still, it's a forty hours in five days is a lot to ask for some mm. for someone. Ugh. Forty forty hours in basically four days because I used all day uh, mon- Monday, yeah, the day before the review, basically preparing it because there was just so much little stuff making you know writing up the script and well, you're familiar with the process, Ted, of a, writing yeah, it up, of writing, and, yeah, and going through uh, it and getting the footage and. Uh. <laughs> But so it's it's nice to actually be able to talk about the game beyond what my limitations were. That's why I was really happy to join you guys. Oh yeah, especially with the the embargo sheet ten miles long. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, I, I'm sure we've given people who are afraid of spoilers more than enough time to run away. Um, so um, first off, let's. What versions did you guys play? Um, I was Moon. Uh, were both of uh, you Sun? Uh, I. Sun's my main file, but I have both, mostly for uh, recording slash streaming slash whatever file. Because okay. we still only have one game file per cartridge. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I, I went with Pokemon Sun as well, so... Yeah. Praise the sun! <laughs> it's a boring <laughs> meme. <laughs> it, yeah, I like it. You're easily I, amused. I, I... <laughs> Yeah, I, yes, don't, I, I don't play Dark Souls, so I don't know. Praise it! <laughs> Damn you, praise it! <laughs> but no, I, I played Sun, and I mean... That, that I wanted my Tiger Zord, so... <laughs> I get, oh my god, it does look like a Tiger Zord. I didn't even think about that. That's crazy. Um, but no, I mean, there really isn't that many differences. You got the version exclusives, you got the 12-hour time difference, and then... Which really doesn't mean anything besides the first totem. Yeah, really not. Is the so first, it kind of makes me wonder what was the point. Is the first totem version exclusive or time exclusive? Uh, like, version exclusive. Okay. Version. Yeah, yeah. so... Yeah. It's, it's really not even that much different. It's just in Moon you face Eradicate and Sun you face uh, Gumshoes. Mm-hmm. Ah, okay. You have an even easier time against Eradicate if you have a fighting type or fighting move because it's double weak mm-hmm. against fighting type. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Not, not, not that much of a difference. Uh, like you, Ryan, I have both versions. They sent me both, but God, if I was going to be able to get to play through both of them in that amount of time. Uh, so, yeah, it was, that's, I guess that is interesting, the, just how little differences there are. Now, have you guys done a lot of ex- exploration after the fact, that now that you beat the Pokemon League, or did you sort of stop? I've been playing a lot since I... Since yeah, I, I, I've been meandering around and just doing stuff, so... Um, okay. I tried to get all the TMs. Uh, I've been... I did the Ultra Beasts uh, post game stuff. I'm trying to get a, at least a complete um, uh, Alola, Alola Dex. Dex. Um, I'm just I'm just waiting for Pokemon Bank just because I have a living Dex and it's like mine wasn't that ready to go at launch. That really frustrates me actually because it's you know one of the biggest things about Pokemon is being able to uh, connect between games and bring up all of your old all of your old Pokemon and I have no problem. With the game, with limiting to that, with, with saying you can't do that until you reach a certain point or whatever. Yeah, because you know it's not fair if you can bring in level one hundred Pokemon by, by the third gym or trial or whatever. But um, I don't understand why they had to wait till January. January. Yeah. Um, I don't know because a lot of the old Pokemon are programmed into the game. Like if you go to the battle tree, po- uh, trainers have Pokemon that you aren't able to obtain otherwise. So mm-hmm. it's not like the models aren't in the game. And they have all uh, 
hack, uh, data miners have hacked it in and they've already found the info for all the other Pokemon. So it's not like it's not there. It's just they don't want you to access it yet, which is just bizarre. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't quite understand that either. I, the biggest surprise for me was finding out that there, there, there's no national decks. Like, I went to Kukui's place and... Like, hey, okay, where's my national decks and nothing? I'm like, am I missing it somewhere? And I ended up talking to uh, Serapy, and he was like, no, it's it's not in the game at all. Yeah. Which, which is strange, which is, it makes me wonder how they're going to do it when Bank does come out. I The only thing I can imagine them doing is an update where they... Um, it's like they, they do an update to the game where they... Um, where, you know, it comes with a patch or whatever, and then that brings in the national decks... Because if you do the island scans or whatever and get some of the Pokemon from that, they don't pop into your decks at all. So it's just, it's so bizarre uh, how some of this stuff is being handled. Um, uh, but let's talk about, like, okay, so let's talk about the story for a little bit. Because I was actually really surprised by how much I enjoyed Sun and Moon's plot. Um, Lily is adorable. Lily is adorable. Mm. Um, Lily is probably the in my opinion, the best character in Pokemon, period. She's up there. It's, it, she, it needs to settle a little bit, digest some. I, I can understand that, but I'm like looking back, looking back at other characters that have come and gone, and uh, there's really not that really got the kind of character development that she saw. Yeah, I agree. Um, she is... By the way, see the uh, Smash 4 mod with her and Cosmog? Yes, that's so amazing. I love it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't... I wouldn't know if she's necessarily the best character because I still really like N. I think N is one of the best characters. Yeah. In uh, N's up there. Silver's up there. Um, mm. One thing that I will say though is is that I feel like, as a whole, um, one thing that I can definitely say is I think that um, Sun and Moon's trial captains are the best gym leaders, so to speak, that we've gotten since Gen Two, Gen and, Five, Gen Two, and Gen Five, um, which are my favorites. Because they do Because they actually do something. <laughs> they do stuff and they have personalities worth remembering. Because, like, in games, uh, particularly Gens 3 and 4, I think, are the most guilty of this. Most of the gym leaders just kind of sit in their gyms and wait to be beaten. Oh, 6. Gen 6. I cannot remember a single yeah. uh, gym leader from Gen 6. I, I can remember their faces, but I can't remember their names. Oh, I can't remember mm -hmm. their designs at all. Or even, like, their types. Like, I know that there's a fairy well, type. Well, not, not, not all of them, but a few at least. Yeah. There's a, yeah, there's a few standouts, but nothing that major, not in the way that Gen 5 or uh, even Sun and Moon is. And I, I think that is a definite thing. Like, there's this whole joke going around now about how you're able to, like, best new feature, able to sniff beds. But uh. <laughs> they're, they're not wrong because, that, uh, like, being able to visit the trial captain's houses, seeing their bedrooms to get a, a taste of their personality, smelling their beds to get, a like, again, another look at their, like, how they live and what they're like. Mm -hmm. A lot of like, the trials being just their hobbies. Yeah, it was just really showed how much personality they all had. Like when I saw it's, it's just not a standard gym in, in in context of the series. Is the cabinets can make up their own trials. Yeah, yeah. basically. Um, yeah, Sophocles. Um, which is which one is your guys' favorite trial? Um, well, trial captain in general, but also trial because I personally I think that. Um, Ki Kawai is the Kive. Kive. Okay, that's he's not my favorite gym leader, but he's definitely got my favorite trial out of all of them because it's hilarious. Random hiker. <laughs> no, not just the random hiker. The Salazal doing like the jazz hands in the in the final one too just cracks me <laughs> cracks me up. Oh man, how did you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I'm looking like it like. Is it the super obvious hiker, or are they actually hiding something that I'm not seeing? Like, that that actually threw me for a bit. Yeah, it's like, are they trying to distract me from something, or... <laughs> I, oh, I like, uh, what was the water girl's name, Lana? Or... Lana, oh, oh yeah. Lana. Yeah, and she's she's yeah. like, oh man, I wanted a hot swimming guy, but you'll you'll do, I suppose. But, or, or, be, or being, like, super sarcastic, or flat about it. It's like, oh me, oh my, who could that be? <laughs> yeah, that's, well, the, the, that's pretty that great. And the, and... Yeah, that, that in the Jaws moment. <laughs> Oh, with the, oh, the wishy-washy. Yes. <laughs> wishy <-washy. laughs> Lapras was like, I, I, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> this isn't fair. Uh, I'd probably say um, favorite trial would probably have to be Acerola, just because I do like Mimikyu's whole backstory and going yeah. through this haunted 
shopping supermarket. mall and, and a supermarket, yeah. I guess. And getting to that room that actually wasn't there at the end is like it was a nice ghost moment that Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, and I like how. I- I like how Mimikyu is kind of walking around in the background in the last scene. Yeah, it's so great. It, it's, um, it really stood out. In terms of design and personality, I think Acerola is probably my favorite of the group. I think because she's um, you see her a lot on Ula Ula Island because uh, there's only two trials there. It's her and Sophocles, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. And Sophocles, you see the most during the. Um, you see Sophocles the most during the uh, the festival, festival plaza, plaza, so that's their excuse for not having him around during the story. But she gets a lot of character development, and when you finally fight her, and she does that little face where she goes like, ah, it's just like, that was adorable. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, she's probably my favorite uh, design and personality-wise out of all of them. The, the Mimikyu stuff was cute two um it's just turn behind you <laughs> what was really creepy was is like you see all the pikachu signs all over the place and you're like oh shit <laughs> like <laughs> yeah this is it's like stalker territory it's like yeah. oh god what am i in for? no mimikyu hates pikachu don't you know he yeah up as the anime. thing he hates <laughs> yeah. he dresses up as the thing he hates the most it's like oh damn <laughs> this, this game's kind of messed up uh, oh, there's a lot of dark moments to it. I, I will say before we move on from the trial captains, I did get a, a lot of like enjoyment of out of Mina, the artist. Oh, she was great. Yeah. <laughs> like she was just like not really like like when I fought Hapu before her, I'm like, are, are, are we skipping the seventh trial? Is that not a thing now? Or they just trick us and like surprise, only six trials, and then you get to the sort of self-run Como trial. <laughs> yeah, that one was okay. Um, I. Yeah, I, I kind of wish that she had, like, a post-game trial. You do fight her in the Ultra Beast section, and you can um, fight her again in somewhere in the Pony area. But I do wish that she had gotten, like, she's like, oh, I come up with something, you want to try it? And you kind of got an extra trial. I thought that that would have been cool. Um, yeah. She's mm. a little, there's a little bit of missed potential with her, unfortunately. But it's not a huge deal. Yeah, but she, she still had a lot of personality, just that sort of wandering artist that's sort of out there. <laughs> oh my god, Beldum, stop calling in help. Jesus Christ. Sorry, I'm trying to... I guess we should talk about that then. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying to catch Pokemon, so uh, I'm trying to fail the Pokedex. I need to catch Beldum. I only have... I've, I've only got... I'm using... Okay, so I used a Lilligan for my file, um, and I only gave... I gave her Petal Dance as her main attack because she... Um, she has the ability own tempo, so once she's uh, done with the pedal dance, she doesn't get uh, confused. So I'm like, oh, sweet, awesome. So, but she's the also the only person on my team that knows the status move. So I have to switch her out because I can't use pedal dance because that'll kill the other Beldum. And then I gotta switch someone in, and then oh my god, it's. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, I, 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 you know, I didn't mention that in my review because I wasn't sure. The take on it, because there was only one time where it got truly annoying to me, and that was with a bunch of Magby, where it did happen, where they called in help like six or seven times. But then in, oh, like, it, towards the end of the game, they kept failing on me. So it was like, didn't become that much of an issue. Uh, For me, it's either they fail immediately and it's fine, or if they do get it, it happens like seven times in a row and it's like, ugh. Yeah, you just kind of want to be done at this point oh my god stop calling for help jesus christ i just want to uh okay <laughs> you, okay i love that they have the adrenaline orb so that you can get pokemon to call and that you can chain it and make it your choice to have it happen but when you're just trying to catch something because you can't catch a pokemon when it's um when they're two on the when field. there's two on the mm. field so i would really just rather that either they gave you an item so that they would stop calling for help, or you would need to have them you throw the journal in orb at standard Pokemon to get them to to call because it's really aggravating to have them do it over and over and over again. Which is more annoying to you guys, the calling for help uh, in Sun and Moon or the horde battles from X and Y? Um, calling because horde battle is just essentially one battle with a bunch of weak pokemon ultimately that still goes by really quick because they're all supposed to be quote unquote a lot weaker than you and if you have field spread moves like surf or dark pulse or whatever they all go down instantly 
Yeah. This is ultimately a random number that can potentially just keep going and going and going. <laughs> it's especially yeah, irri- it's especially irritating when you're trying to catch something is the big thing cuz they'll just keep on spawning pokemon until the cows come home and or until the milk tank comes home, I guess. Um and <laughs> it just it won't it won't end and you'll eventually get into a situation where you're just you're there and then something stupid happens. Like, uh, like I don't know them them doing like a like a self destruct or or whatever, and then they'll end up dying, and it's like you wasted all that time. Uh, there's also I've also seen instances where like there's um, one thing that does annoy me is is that there's certain Pokemon that are limited to uh, SOS battles. Uh, oh, like right here, okay. My Beldum, the Beldum that I'm trying to catch, just ran out of PP. You struggle, killed itself. Um, it's like, com- <laughs> That's I why was... you have a quick ball, Ted. <laughs> it, dude, it's catch rates like five. It's, it, it won't, it won't, it won't work. <laughs> I caught a Beldum with no problem. I think I might've caught it with a level ball. I've, I'm not sure. I forget how I caught it, but I got one, but you're right. The, 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 the only way to catch, um, uh, Marini is by having another Pokemon call it. Uh, There's a lot of Pokemon where they can only be called like Gumi, cast form, um, Gumi cast form. Uh, there's a there's a large number, and so the Pokedex does tell you what patches of grass there are uh, they're in, but they won't tell you if they're only found by calling. So you can be running in there for hours trying to find something, and you'll never appear because not only is it just from SOS, it's only SOS at like a five percent chance or something to that effect, and mm. it's just it's the Cerebi. Yeah, uh, po- <laughs> and to, let's let's be fair. Pokemon has always had stuff where. If you didn't look it up, you would never have any idea how to how to figure it out. So I'm not going to judge a ton because of that, but I mean, really, like it's 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 a little ridiculous this time because you might it it might be like a one in twenty chance and then a one in five chance, and it's it's just it takes forever to try to find specific things. It's really mm-hmm. my biggest issue with the game is calling for help because um, it it can kill the excitement of trying to find a Pokemon, uh, catch a Pokemon, especially considering that Pokemon are more likely to catch, uh, to call for help the lower their HP is. And you need to lower their HP in order to uh, get them to, in order to get them to, in order to get them caught. So, mm. yeah, it's, I find it severely aggravating. Um, It, it would have been a lot e- better for me if they had just made it so that if you throw the Adrenaline Warp, then they'll start calling for help. Um, and I, it's not like I'm I'm against like the totem Pokemon calling for help. That's fine because those are boss fights. But for random fights, I could go I could go without it personally. Uh, <laughs> for me, it's more of an annoyance than anything else. It it it, it, does, it, it doesn't sucks. really hamper the game, but it's just annoying. It's really yeah, exactly. annoying. It, it it's really annoying. It was really annoying for me because I was trying to catch as much as I could as I was going. So I ran into the problem like every other route pretty much is 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 what's going on mm. so see that's probably why it didn't affect me as much because i was started that way because i wanted to see more of the new pokemon and i wanted to see how much variety there was uh all that and then by the end i was like well i'll catch what i come across but i i can't spend time just running around in a circle trying to find everything yeah especially considering that some of the there's a lot of really rare pokemon in this one like it feels like almost every route has a five or one percent yeah. draw this mm. time or like uh what's the water poison urchin whatever pokemon's name marini marini, <laughs> marini. yeah, yeah. Uh, oh it's a one percent chance in normal fishing and only a 20 percent chance on special spots so it's like good luck with that oh no That's what like you do is you, you i mean i mean i got one but you you soft reset in front of a in front of a bubbles until it until yeah. <laughs> that's what i did for phoebus and that's what i did for marini as well no wait no marini is uh. Is Marini SOS only? I don't remember. It probably depends on the No, code. it's not. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Um, I guess that's about as good of a segue as we can get. What is your guys' overall opinion of the new Pokemon? Because um, there's... Oh, I think it's a mixed bag, personally. Um, there's some I really yeah, like. Yeah, definitely. And there's some I don't really like at all. Um... I can agree there. That's about my opinion too. Um, 
I have a generally positive opinion. I think I like most of the designs. I think they work rather well. The only one that I've come across that I've just not been a fan of design wise is Delmise. Oh, the anchor thing. Yeah, the anchor. oh oh. I remember. I, just, I didn't. I didn't see that until yeah, the I don't, elite I, four. I was like, "What the fuck is that thing?" <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kind of. I was just kind of like, "The fuck is this?" And what does it have to do with anything? Like, yeah, it because it doesn't get any like we didn't know anything about it. It just sort of pops up. I heard people talking about it. Like, what the hell is a Delmise? And then I po- popped up in a few battles, and I'm like, oh. It's a anchor with a face, and I, I get it. I mean, Pokemon's done those type of designs before, but for whatever reason, this one just does not work for me. And there's a lot of, I think the thing is, is that there's a lot of evolutions for me that I don't like very much. Like for example, uh, Picky Peck. I think Picky Peck, on its own, is the one of the most adorable standard birds we've got since uh, like Pidgey and Hoot Hoot. Uh, one of the best. But both of its evolved forms, I hate both of their designs. Uh, you don't like the Tuki Tuki? Oh, I uh, love Tukan. I do not love Tukan on at all. I think it looks really weird. I don't like how angry he always looks. <laughs> you, don't like the t- you don't like the thing in the Tiki room? And I really did not like that he was another... Uh, I really did not like that he was another uh, normal flying type. Because like, I was kind of hoping that like Talonflame, he might have changed types. So like I was, kinda, I was really kind of holding on that... Um, He'd change type and his design would get better after Trumbeak, uh, but it just didn't happen. Um, <clears throat> hmm. It is a weird evolution line to go from Woodpecker to whatever Trumbeak is. And that, that one is the weakest design to me, to a Toucan. Uh, that one, that does sort of come out of nowhere, but Toucan and toucan. saved my team so many... Yeah, exactly. We got a Toucan Pokemon. It saved my ass so many times, and Beak Blast is amazing. It's kind of OP. Yeah, no kidding. Beak Blast. And it also, and it also promotes Fruit Loops. <laughs> <laughs> Just follow his nose to death. <laughs> uh, hold on, I need to pull up the new Pokemon list just so that I can, uh, just so that I can look at them all and like see them all. Um, mm. And speaking of potentially overpowered Mon, how about that Beware? Oh, Beware is fantastic. I love having my Beware on my team. Say my I've ass. I've not used Beware. Beware is fantastic. It, it it's got a massive it's got massive attack and HP, so it can tank mm-hmm. hits really well. And also, it's there's a, a lot of tanks this gen. Very, it's a very slow, very tanky gen. Yeah. yeah. Um, like I'm looking through Crab Brawler. Okay, like Crab Brawler, I think he's cute. Crabominable, eh, not so much. Um, oh, Ribombi. I was really upset that Ribombi was fairy type. Because I really liked Cutie Fly in Ribombi's design, and I wanted to use, I wanted to use them, but uh, it's just I already had a fairy type with Primarina, so it's just well, like, that's not well, that's not the mon's fault. That's not, but I'm definitely using I'm definitely using Ribombi for whenever I do a new save file because and their shiny forms are pink. They are. <laughs> it's really <laughs> it's super cute. I mean, that's the, there's a lot of I, I noticed that bug types and. Um, Fairy and types. Uh, fairy types got a lot of love this gen. Yeah, that they did. They, because... It makes sense. It makes sense too because there's well for fairy types in particular because there's not a lot of them. So mm. um, they wanted to up the they wanted to up the ante. Like a lot of the designs, I actually think are okay. Um, I still hate the sand castles. Um, not I, I still hate them. Um, sandy gast. Yeah, sandy gast. Um, I like them. <laughs> okay. Like Bruxish is, eh, I'm not really a huge fan of uh, the Jangmo O line either. Oh, okay. So this I, is... I like the Jangmo's typing at least. Okay, so it's here's yeah. yeah okay, so here's something I actually wanted to bring up. When I saw all the pre-release material, I hated Lun- both Lunala and Sol Solga Leo's designs. I just I hated mm-hmm. both of them. They both just I thought they were really weird looking, and I didn't like them at all. Mm-hmm. Now that I played through the game and I understand like what their story significance is, I like them so much more now. That that now that I know <laughs> that they're Cosmog's evolution and and all that, I I I just I don't know. It's just I it instantly clicked with me. Our little galaxy fart actually becomes useful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, try training that thing. My God, it knows splash and teleport. Teleport. <laughs> oh well, and then, that... and, then it, and then it gets cosmic power, which is an attacking move. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's it, almost. It is kind of funny. 
Oh, well, it'll almost be daytime in my file soon, so I can actually go and get him. Because uh, I haven't done that yet. You have to bring Lunala to the altar. Lunala or Soigaleo to the yeah. altar again at the opposite time of day of your quote-unquote game. Yeah, and, and then, then you, you can, can transport the other world. I was really hoping when I first saw this, I was like, oh, does that mean I can get both uh, the Pokemon I can't normally catch in this Gen 2? And, and no, it's just a way to change the time of day. Which I, I do think is convenient because when I was playing, I didn't even see daytime very often. Like, because I, I saw night more often than not because I was playing on moon. So mm. it was really, it's really nice to have that option as well. Um, Definitely. Yeah. Sun song, anyone? <laughs> <laughs> That's all we need. Oh, that uh, must have no. made getting the, uh, what's it called, a lot easier, though. The Zygarde cells, if you could change the time of day at any given yeah, point. Yeah, that, that, it, it does help a lot. I had um, no interest in that side quest whatsoever. It's it's not a bad side quest. I mean, they're around. You can naturally find them. I mean, like, you can easily, just going through the game normally, find enough Most to get yourself the 50%. Yeah. Yeah. I've got, uh, yeah, you can find, you only have to find 10 of them in order to complete the Pokedex. Like, and I think, yeah. but just by trying to be thorough normally, I've got at least 70 of them, which mm-hmm. I think is decent, uh, but yeah, it's... And once you look up the uh, the locations, they're pretty easy to find. Um, it's just... It's, yeah. it's just that, to me, I just didn't care, because ultimately this felt really shoehorned in, because they never made a third Pokemon Z game for last gen. Yeah. do anything with Zygarde, so it's like, okay, we have to do something with this mon, so shove the side quest into the next gen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, like, I think part of it is, is that, um, um, part of it is is that, and also, like, the game itself says, like, he's supposed to keep order in Kalos, so what the hell is he doing in, in what the hell is yeah. he doing in, in Alola? Alola? I keep Could on mean something's going to happen here, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah, um, I really, you know, I'm kind of wondering if they're going to try to do a traditional third game for this, or maybe something like Black or White Two with a sequel. Because we'll see with potentially stars. Yeah, because they didn't end up doing anything with X and Y. Uh, because like you know, well, they're, they're, honestly, kind of thankfully, because X and Y isn't very good. It, it's standard. It's okay. It's about it's, as standard it's, it's as it can get, I think, is the big thing. It, it feels like, like in retrospect now, it definitely feels like a, a experimental generation. Yeah. I like think... They were testing some ideas out, and Sun and Moon feels like where they, where they decided to implement them while also experimenting, like, getting rid of the gyms. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just... I think that it's just so strange how much better sun and moon is than um than x and, than y. X and y like I, I never hated x and y yep. uh but yeah but i i was just, I was just like i beat it and i was like okay whatever yeah i never had a lot of motivation to go back to it after the fact and the fact that there's practically no post-game content in sun in x and y did not help that matter at all uh but you know it's just like i feel like this is just as much of an improvement over an x and y as Gen 5 was to Gen 4 for me, and uh, Gen 2 was to Gen 1. It's just, it feels so much more complete, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it well, makes it... a lot of sense, because those are also the instances where you get two Gens on the same piece of hardware as well. So uh, they know mm-hmm. what they're doing with this with this tech, and they don't feel like they have to throw in silly things just because... There's no... I wouldn't know. I wouldn't say that they know what they're doing with this tech. Is who got the slowdown? <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I'm playing on a new 3ds, and even well, so I, am I. And there's still plenty of slowdown. It's whenever there's four Pokemon on screen. As soon as you kill one Pokemon in a four in a double battle, it's it starts running fine again. <laughs> so yeah. I think that they tried. Okay, let's optimize it for totem battles, and that's about it. It's pretty much what I have to assume that they were doing. Hmm. Uh, you can really tell that they're pushing the system to its brink. Uh, just because having four Pokemon on, on at once, how detailed this game is, honestly. There's a lot yeah. of detail to each of them. A detail and a, lot, and a lot of great animation, too. Yeah. They like they went all out. That's why the Stars rumor makes so much sense to me, because it feels like they're just like pushing it as much as they can and then just optimizing it when it becomes Stars on the Switch. Like I, I guess that's how, that, my, what I'm really curious about with Stars is how much of a jump is it going to be from Sun and Moon to Switch? Graphically, if it is a thing at all, but we'll worry about that if when. Yeah, 
Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Like, part of me thinks that we it probably wouldn't be a huge jump. Like, because if they wanted to... Because that... Like, even though the, the basis of the game would mostly be there, they would have to redo all of the textures and all the other graphical assets. So it wouldn't be just as... It wouldn't be as simple as just, like, porting a game from the PS3 to the PS4. Uh, um, no, like an HD remaster. It wouldn't just be like that, because if you tried to blow this up onto a TV screen, I don't think it would look very good at all. Because uh, you can already see the pixelation on a lot of characters' faces um, in mm. cutscenes, for instance. Um, but, it, yeah, it, it's just a very... It's very interesting to, to think about it, I guess, is all that I've got to say. Um... Hmm. Eh. going back to the story because you mentioned the story we talked about the trial cut and then we got distracted because you were playing your damn game yeah i um, finally got the, that goddamn bell uh beldum for the record so hurry yeah. for that. <laughs> good for you yeah um it was i i will say the opening did catch me off guard like i i had a, i was like everybody had that same suspicion Ether Foundation is going to be the real bad guys. Like as as someone pick up that phone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I was like, okay, that's probably going to be something they hold close to their chest. No, scene one. As soon as you get your trainer picked out, boom, they're evil. <laughs> well, they're not but like I, evil. I it's just called it. They're not <laughs> evil. It's just that, like, because most of the people who work in the organization are fine. It's just that Lusa. I can't pronounce her name. Lusa Mine. Lusa Mine, Lusa Mine is yeah. Oh, Lusa yeah. Mine yeah. is like she's straight up abusive to her children, which is something I was majorly shocked that they went that they went. Notice there. how the Pokemon she's obsessed with the Hilago. She dresses uh, Lily just like that. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, yeah. There's like the, the everybody saw like and... connections to it and how and all that stuff and like oh that's what it's all that's what the connection was not that lily is actually an ultra beast no she just designed like dressed her like an ultra beast also her her team is also full of traditionally adorable or pretty pokemon as well yeah clefable beware uh melodic yeah stuff mm-hmm. like that but yeah i was not i was not expecting like honestly i think she's one of the best villains a big villains that we've gotten uh, for in a long, long time. Because uh, yeah. I hate, uh, I hate. Oh, who's his face from Gen Six? So, uh, uh, oh, Flair. Uh, uh, well, Team Flair, I, I hate them too. Yeah. But uh, what's the what, name? Whatever his name is, I yeah, can't, I can't remember I'm either. He's, he's right stupid. Right um, yeah, but I he oh he is he irritates me. Uh, Guess I'm going to destroy the world because <laughs> reasons. <aren't> grateful. <laughs> Guestus, guess, yeah. Guestus, awesome theme music aside, Dennis. Dennis. Uh, awesome music aside, Dennis is very very boring. So I'm not a big fan of him either. And uh, I uh, unless we speak of Cyrus, the better. <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of people really like Cyrus. I just don't. I just I don't. So, That's why I didn't want to speak of them because I did want to get you going. Yeah. So honestly, I think that, and you know, Giovanni is okay. He's just kind of not really super fleshed out. So honestly, I think Lusomania is probably the best big villain we've had in Pokemon. Period. I think because she's given a sufficient amount of personality and motivation. She's not really sympathetic, but you understand why Lily cares about her because you know. Like, all things considered, she's still her mom. And that's mm-hmm. not something that, even if you don't want to, it's not easy to not care about your mom. So, um, yeah, and there's there's a lot of more subtlety to her than I thought that there would be. Um, yeah, and, and, even, and, even, and even with the other, quote-unquote, big bad Guzma, if you go to, like, his house. Yeah, yeah he has, he's get... got a mom. Like, y- you meet his mom, which is... No, you see, you see his dad, too. Yeah, but mm-hmm. it's just like... Very few bad guys do you get to meet their mom, and it's very humanizing doing that. And, and, and it's also just kind of sad because you basically it's a, basically heavily inferred that Guzman was in an abusive household as well. Yeah, he was? You look at his, yeah, if you look at the golf clubs, you see that some of them are bent and broken. Oh. And his dad mentions trying to whoop his boy into shape and that he got whooped instead. Oh, oh, God, I didn't pick up on that. Oh, yeah. Oh, that there's sucks. A, there's a, <laughs> there is a heavy thread of abuse. There's a, like a th- There's a theme there, like, like I said, family is a big theme of this, both good families and bad families. And uh, Team Skull themselves were, an, were excellent in their development, too, because you get a little bit about why they are the way they are. Oh, Team like, Skull's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> that's goofy as hell, and you can't take them serious, but that's kind of the point, because these guys are all 
island trial dropouts. That's yeah. why and they they're, suck. And they're, and, they're, and, they're just, and they're just losers that no one likes. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're fantastic. Honestly, I think they're one of the best teams we've had. Like, I also, I also like how the punk girl and boy are obviously ex-Team Skull members. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah, it's, it's – well, first off, their dialogue's hilarious, and the theme music, uh, uh, Team Skull – <laughs> oh, um, one thing that's interesting. Um, so apparently, the Japanese word for skull is dokoron, I believe. So the the so the sound that you that you hear when you uh, when a team skull guy spots you, it goes like dokoron. It's the game basically just saying skull in Japanese. So oh, nice. <laughs> they're such losers. It's fantastic. Um, uh, but yeah, it's you're right though in that like they are like some kind of weird dysfunctional family, and it's ah. Uh, Man, they're they're so good. I don't know if they outrank Team Plasma for me because they're just so different from Plasma, but they're still great in their own right. And I, I just I love the way that they that they go. So, mm. so what do you think of this game's edgy McEdgy? Gladion was okay. I think that that was an element of missed potential in the storytelling. Unfortunately, when it comes to the abuse, like the again, like the abuse subtext with Lusamine and. Um, Lily, um, mm-hmm. Lily and Gladion don't interact at all before the scene where all three of them meet, and like there is a really great line after the fact where Lily's like, "But you left us. Why did you leave me alone, alone with her?" And unfortunately, that's the kind of situation that does happen with real kids. Like if a sibling runs away, you know, there's some there's guilt about leaving one of the uh, the siblings alone with them and stuff like that. And I feel like and and the implied abuse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it would have been. Like, even, you know, leaving the subtext off of the table, it, the having more time with those characters together would have just developed them more and made them more fleshed out as a whole. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I did like Gladion, like, like Titanol is the perfect Pokemon for him because they're both, like, they are kind of kindred spirits, and I like that aspect. And it I, 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 I just find his animations ridiculously silly. Oh yeah, it's it's totally he's a, silly. He's a, he's a tryhard, much like Team Skull, so he fits. Much like much like Guzma, yeah. I mm. I think that he's had they pushed him a little bit more. I think it tried to make him more of the competitive rival that we saw in Gen One and Two. I think I would have liked him a lot more. He, they just kind of. I guess just kind of there for the most part. I think mm-hmm. if they had used him just a little bit more, a few more fights, a few more appearances, he would. I would love him as a character. But as he is, he's okay. He's he's. I like okay. him in the hotel on Route Eight. Get out. Get out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Excuse me. You don't know what genre this is, good sir. Uh, this is an RPG. I'm allowed to go in any house I want <laughs> and pilfer for your stuff. Oh, you can't smell his bed either. It's sad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, did you guys find uh, Lily's diary at Kukui's place after the after the game? Oh, you can read oh, no, it. No, I didn't. Um, yeah. Oh, I. I... Uh, the Murkrow picks the lock. Oh, what happens? And it basically just gives you idea about her escaping, her reasons for escaping. Hold how on, she I'm, met up with. I'm, uh, I'm she playing. She originally went to Professor Burnett. Um, I'm 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 playing right now, so I can read it. Uh, I can read it right now. Uh, so. Yeah, gotcha. Flying right now. Totally. That's, inter- that's interesting. I, I was so happy when I got to that point where you found out the uh, cuckoo was married. It's like ah, called that like right from oh, the beginning. Oh, the poor fangirls. They're so upset. <laughs> I saw the wedding ring, and I'm like, oh, he must be married. And people were like, no, that's on the she, wrong finger. Or she's no, under pro- she's under now. Professor Kukui for personal reasons. Personal reasons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you want to know something else though? Um, uh, professor- I like how you could be a smartass to him as well. Yeah, uh, Professor Kukui's wife is from the Pokemon Dream Radar game yeah. from Gen 5. She, she totally is. And it's, totally it's so is. random, but it's also... I, I like Qu- that as quite well. Quite fitting. <laughs> yeah, it's... Yeah, she doesn't do an awful lot either, but I do like... it's more. She's more there to develop Lily, I think, as well. Because mm-hmm. Lily... Um, says, like, oh, she was like a mom to me, and things like that. Um, one thing I will say is I think that Kukui himself is one of the best professors we've gotten in the series, period. Cause I he's, think it helps I'm he's the mass royal, constantly. professor. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's very well developed. He's around a lot. Um, I, I, also, I also like how he's essentially the quote-unquote champion battle, which is a direct callback to the unused Professor Oak fight in Gen 1. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's awesome. And he ends up getting the... The, um, the third Pokemon neither of you chose. Yeah, which is... Which is, again, direct callback to the unused Professor Oak fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
it was a, it was a very clever callback, and I was like, I, I kept waiting, like, who's going to be the champion? Because I kept expecting Kahili to be it. Because you just hear about Kahili, it's like, oh, that might be yeah, golf, uh, golf lady. Kahili? Uh, the golf lady, one of the elite four. Oh, I didn't hear about her until the the the. They elite talk. Four. They talk about her in the demo. Oh, okay. I didn't. Yeah, play and there's a much. few. There's a few lines here and there, like at the um, uh, not the not the Tide Song Hotel, the other one. What it's, it's in the demo. Yeah, and you know, I, I was expecting that, but again, it didn't really show up much. But so by the point I was done, like I was there, I was like. I wonder if Kukui's going to be it because he's just constantly been there and he would be unexpected in a way. Uh, and one... I'll tell you what, I was underprepared for him. I there is a point, especially yeah, with, he is I, a surprisingly good trainer. Yeah, I, I, I there's a point there where I was just shoving potions yeah. in my Pokemon's mouth as they like did like I think it was like takedown or something yeah. like that to damage themselves. And I'm like, oh, he's almost dead. He's almost about to kill himself. And then like he has it down to a sliver of health. Hyper potion. Full restore. You son of a. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't find Mother any. Fucker. I didn't find the game very hard at all. Um, it, well, it's it's Pokemon. It's not going to be very hard. I'm just glad that there's at least some element of challenge to it with the totem Pokemon and all that. Yeah, but Lorantis was definitely my hardest fight. Uh, Lorantis. Once I prepared, I didn't have too much uh, trouble. It only took yeah. me like one try. That's yeah, part it, of it, I, why. It, I, again, it's just it's just one of those. I'm glad they're at least trying to make it at least somewhat difficult. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not just it's not in. just a total it's not, it's not a total cakewalk. Yeah. Oh, I I, mean, I, I, I hated wishy washy a lot more with uh, alone mole healing it all the time. Uh, it's, oh, it's yeah. it's a matter of luck what supporting Pokemon you get, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, because it's just you know it's it's either like you get a decent Pokemon for it, uh, or you you don't. You know, it's um because for example when I got um the second time around I think I I did Lorantis. Lur- I got a uh, cast form, and that was uh, a lot more tricky than when it just had a Fomantis running around yeah, with it. Yeah, because it could set it up with its different forms. Yeah, so yeah. which it's... which again is really interesting because they're actually trying to put strategy into the enemies in this game. It's not just oh, here's my dark type. Use your fighting type to kill me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. You had to really think about it, and I and I like that aspect. And you know, the Elite Four and Final Challenge was tricky for me. I had to use a lot of items because, well, I was at the point where I was just trying to get through the game, so I wasn't really grinding a whole lot. Oh, did you know that? Um, did you try the Elite Four again after you beat the? Not, Elite? I have yet to do that. Okay, so when you fight the Elite Four again, you aren't guaranteed to get Kukui uh, to fight you. Yeah, it could, it could be someone. It could be someone else to challenge you for the title of champion. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, I really like that. It, it yeah, could be like Gladian or How or uh, I think Plumeria. Um, it can be a number of different people. Um, so trying to show them all, I think, would probably end up being a test of RNG more than anything else. But yeah, it's it's a it's very interesting because you know that was all, all honestly something that I always kind of thought about at Pokemon. It's just like okay, you beat the Elite Four, you become the champion. Do you what instantly now? lose your title as soon as you beat the game? Like, because you have to go and beat the Elite Four again, and the champion, like, Blue will still be there when you go back. Like, did he just <laughs> take it when you left or something? So, yeah. the fact that it's just like, nope, you got to defend your title, I think that's really cool. Uh, that they would even put that concept into the game in the first place. Because that's something I've wanted since Gen 1 and 2, uh, is the idea that, okay, you actually have to defend your Pokemon. And it also gives you a more... Um, logical reason to fight old trainers again because you know stuff like oh you have to re- you can refight silver on tuesdays and thursdays <laughs> in the elite forum just never really made too much sense for me or uh, stuff like that so it's mm-hmm. just like okay how we'll try to challenge you as champion that makes sense to me so yeah i i yeah. like that change a lot it's i find it really cool there's, there's a lot of smart decisions in the game and there's a lot of stuff that helps helps out the player like the daycare, not leveling up your Pokemon, having because that's the, the only thing. That, yeah, because no one used the daycare to level up Pokemon. No, it's honestly more annoying when the Pokemon learns a move that you were trying to give to an egg move to a Pokemon, and now it's just gone. So yeah, yeah. go use a go go use a heart scale. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, using and you having the Pokepelago in that training island. Yeah. There you go, and you can train some way, put more Pokemon up. And it's just a lot of there's just a lot of convenience built into it, which I mm-hmm. really liked about it. I, I loved and... Poke Pelago. Um, did you guys ever um, play Bravely Default or Bravely Second? 
Uh, I played play Bravely a little Default. bit of Bravely Default. Yeah, it's like it's like the Build Your Town thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's very similar to this. I guess before we go to other mechanics, I guess last thing about characters. Anyone go to the battle tree yet? Uh, not yet. I'm waiting until I finish up a little bit more of the other stuff. Um, I, I did I, fight I... Blue there though. Um, uh, oh, okay, I, I I did go to the battle tree and I fought Red. Um, and then I went through ten battles, but I I have an issue. I. I have never been able uh, to get interested in those type of the trees or the battle towers or anything like that because I'm not me honest. either. But I just wanted to see the characters again, and it's just one of those. I wish they had held off on talking about red and blue until after the game came. Oh, out. Oh, yeah. that would have been so much better because then it would have been like, oh, red and blue oh, are here. Yeah. It's just like, oh, you want to fight us? Do our battle tree, and then I'm like, oh yes, yes, I'm going to do the battle tree now. Th- mm. That's honestly, that's a. I know that it, you can't really blame the game itself for. It's uh, marketing, but they really, I think that they should have shown maybe half the Pokemon that they've shown. Like, I think that they should have shown none of the Ultra Beasts at all, personally. Because then you would have saw them, yeah. seen them and been like, what the hell is what that? The fuck? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, what did you guys think uh, of the Ultra Beasts? Well, I, I guess just one last thing. No, oh. no, uh, no, a, no, a Gary Champion or, not Gary, no Blue Champion or Red Champion. Oh, that made me so. That, also, Cole Rez. When you fought Cole Rez, no Cole Rez Battle Remix? What the hell game? Uh, mm. We'll talk more about music later, I assume. Um, but yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, what was the topic again? Uh, what did you guys think of, about the Ultra Beasts? I think it was a good idea because it kind of let them just go really nuts with the design. and have an excuse for that. Yeah, like the designs—they're weird and bizarre, and they don't look like Pokemon. But, but they're supposed to be that. That's the point. Yeah. So and it, and it surprisingly works as a result. Yeah, I would have much rather that they kept them secret, though. Uh, yeah. Or at least not not go beyond, you know, the first three. No, I honestly, I don't think any of them should have been shown at all. Maybe Nihilego. Nil- Nil- I, I think they should have shown Nihilego just to kind of plant the seeds of, okay, there's going to be some really weird stuff here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but everything else, because I think it would have made the, the, like, the moment where, when you're, because you're, to search for the Ultra Beasts... You've got to, like, run in the grass and just hope you find them. Like, the moment you hear the music and then it would have made that suspense of what the hell is this thing going to look like kind of add up. Yeah, that would have worked about a lot better. That whole fight between the Kahunas and the Ultra Beasts when they first appear, that would have been a lot cooler. Yeah. Uh, more exciting just seeing that uh, play out. No, I, I agree. It's something they should have kept a little bit closer to their vests. Uh, and... It was also interesting, like, one, how many you had to catch. <laughs> like, Why are there I, four of them? I have no idea. Why do I Why do I have four? I don't think I'm going to be trading them that much or anything like that. So well, I, I get two just so that you can trade with uh, people who you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, so it's just like, like get, oh. Get the, other, get the other versions, Ultra Beast or whatever. But Yeah, that's yeah. fine to me. But Why are there four? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I will say I love... Buzz Swole's and Zerkatry's names. Yeah, Zerkatry's <laughs> Zirk- 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 amazing. Yeah, Zerkatry is that's a great pun name, and Buzz Swole is just like I saw that. I was like, I I got legitimately giddy. I was like, that is so clever. <laughs> no, I just like Zerkatry because it's a tree of circuits. It's <laughs> <laughs> great. So yeah, I I like the designs. They're interesting. It was also like I love the challenge of like. What the hell type are these guys? <laughs> oh yeah, that's like because I was expect they were talking about the oh the fourth one uh, I forget its name um, the 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 one the fourth one they were talking about having blasters so I assumed it was fire type but it's actually like steel that was mm-hmm. bizarre for me uh, yeah did you guys you enjoy know, that you know side quest I did oh, but so- just really quick uh, whenever whoever gets around to recording. It's on end mood for PSC. Whenever we get to the alternate dimension area, since it's Nihilego, the jellyfish thing, make it all techno ravey and put in the uh, SpongeBob dancing with the jellyfish <laughs> song. You know, um, my Gen Four, my Gen Four bias is going to be showing again. I'm just, I'm not a fan of Looker. I never found him interesting. Ever. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't hate Looker, but I don't particularly enjoy him either. I just, I don't I get that... why he keeps coming back. I guess. he's a fan favorite. <laughs> I just, I don't get it. Him and Cynthia, I've never gotten Cynthia either. Well, I like Cynth- I like Cynthia, but Looker is just kind of She doesn't do anything. There. She does nothing. Or... I think it's because of her challenge. 
eh. fucking Garchomp, man. <laughs> eh. Yeah. Um, I, I did enjoy the Looker's quest, though, I, and I think it helped also that he had Annabelle with him. So he had that sort of... Oh, mystery. Annabelle Actually, I thought I, was interesting. Yeah. I, I will say, though, when I first met Nanu... Um, I, I totally thought that, you know, after Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, he lost his memory and all that. I'm like, He's oh. in Omega Ruby? He's in Omega Ruby yeah. and Alpha Sapphire? Oh, yeah. wow. I didn't go, know that. Yeah. If you go to the, uh, post-game area that he's like, you find out that he somehow washed up on, on the shore and lost his memory. Doesn't actually mean anything. Uh, but I thought that this game would pick up with that. So when I saw Nandu, I was like holy shit, is that like an old looker and he just lost his memory and just sort of started a family and that's why he's so much older because we already said saw red and blue age up. So I think maybe it, that's him. I think it's, it's implied. It's not the case. I think it's implied that it's 10 years since uh, Omega Rufi Alpha Sapphire because they say 10 years had passed. Um, and Yeah, with it, with Annabelle. And it's mm. 10 years since, uh, apparently, my Pokemon timeline knowledge is not great. Apparently, a Ruby and Sapphire are supposed to take place at the same time as Red and Blue, so that would make uh, that would make Red and Blue the characters about twenty uh, when uh, Low, early twenties. Yeah. yeah, early twenties yeah. when you see them. Also, your characters yeah. they 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 confirm that your characters are supposed to be like eleven, and I'm like, these guys are not eleven. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> like, um, maybe it's just me. Like, I always seem I always see these characters as being more like thirteen. But you know that's yeah, that's just a, a fan a fan theory kind of thing or whatever. Uh, I do like blue and red's new design, so yeah, yeah, they're they're really good. They're such bros. I'm so glad that they made yeah. up and became friends friends again. That makes me happy inside. Yeah, <laughs> I don't get why the whole red being mute though is a running gag though. Uh, it's like just because of the one fight on Mount Silver. I think it's more just I don't know. I think. Because it, it it's not like he doesn't speak in context of red and blue. You just don't hear what he says. Yeah, it's it's a little strange. And it's, I mean, I kind of get it. I mean, to be fair, we have also never met any of the previous protagonists in other gens, so we don't yeah. know if they're mute as well. We've never so met it's not really president we, president. Yeah, we've never we've never met gold or anything. Yeah, and their names are gold, gold and silver and crystal. I'm sorry, I'm never going to call him Ethan. It's just wrong. <laughs> like I mean, if one if Silver's name is Silver, like that's his canonical name. So if you're gonna have one character be named Silver and the other Ethan, I'm sorry, that just doesn't work. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I start calling them by their quote unquote English names starting from Gen three on, but Gen one and two is their color names. Yeah, yeah. well, that's because that from sense. Gen three on, that's when they start telling you what they like, what their actual names are, because they're Brendan and May. Um, like yeah. that's, those are their official names in, in gen five, not gen mm. five, gen three, gen three. uh, and in gen four, like gen four, there's Don and the I don't know the other guy's, guy's name. name. <laughs> I don't whatever, his whatever his name is. Yeah. And yeah. then, uh, it's like Hilda, Hilda and, Hel- and Hilda and Hilbert. Yeah. Uh, those, Which I hate those names. No, I love those no, character yeah. designs. I hate those names. Uh, they're awful. <laughs> they're terrible names. Um, uh, but and yeah. Cal- and then Callum and... Uh, Serena for yeah. Gen Six. So I can remember yeah. Serena just because of the anime, but not Callum. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, but yeah, it, it's one of those things with it, it happens. I guess I, I I get it. It's the ongoing joke. It kind of works, but it, yeah, I would like to see some personality because I like how they did give your character a little bit of personality. Because uh, you can be because you can be. A, because you could be a smart-ass professor. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't you cold? There, there's well, that. There's the whole protecting thing. But then you have other scenes where all these other characters are reacting and your character just has a blank stare. Uh, uh, well, I'm going to say, I don't... I Actually, I don't think that's just them giving your character a personality. I think that's just them being very, very lazy. Because it's really dis... It's really disorienting. Not disorienting, but it it's jarring. Like, when you'll have, like, Lusamine going nuts. Like... And you still have that dumb smile on abs- your face. Like, yeah, exactly. like I was absorbing Lusamene and you're just like, eh, duh, I don't know what's <laughs> going on. Like, it's, I'm sorry, it's just, they they do have facial animations programmed into the game. I just, I don't understand why they didn't use them, you know. 
So yeah, it yeah. really needed it because there's. I'm, I'm talking beyond that because they do have a little bit of personality in other ways, but it's very subtle. But again, again I, just, I, I, I just like being able to choose smart ass options. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that as well. Um, get up, to, get up to the Pokemon League. Aren't you cold? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> One thing, though, I think that the trainer customization this time around is very disappointing. Um, there are not very many options for clothes. Um, and there, are no, there are basically no options for guys at all. Yeah, and also, I hate that there's like five hairstyles and none of them match me. In Animal yeah. Crossing, you can have the guys wear girls' clothes and quite vice versa and have girls' uh, hairstyles. So I'd like mm-hmm. to just have the standard long hair uh, girl hairstyle. Cause that so would what you're saying cool. is you look like a girl. Well, it would ma- honestly if I picked a- <laughs> honestly if I picked the girl trainer, I could get a trainer that looks more like me than if I picked the guy trainer. And I just I don't think that that's really right. Uh, I think that you mm. should be able to have your character look however you want them to look. So I'm just I'm not a fan of how they of how they did that. I'm I'm still like you get a preview of the clothes, but I also want a preview of the hairstyles so I can actually take a look without spending four thousand for the for the change. You know. Well, what yeah. I wish they would do is at the start of the game. Once you choose, you know, your gender and your skin tone, let us pick our hairstyle, too. And eye color. Cause I, yeah, I, hairstyle it, and eye color. It's like, just let us choose that from the start. There's no point making us wait till later in the game just to make it look a bit more like us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that it's is... Like, I, I guess their idea is to get you into the action early, but it's like, if it's an RPG and you're letting us customize things, just let us do it from the start. Or at least, like, the... Well, I do like that they gave you a clothing store in your first town. That yeah. that's at least a good start, but um, mm-hmm. like I I don't like there's extra hairstyles that you don't get until you beat a certain amount of the game, and I'm like, why can't I have this option right from the get go? You know, because it's not like it's not like like you know specific clothes I understand, but like the hairstyles if they are all gonna cost the same amount of money, there's no reason to hide specific ones behind certain uh, plot walls. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, speaking of money, how'd you guys enjoy that uh, oh. one million dollar bonus after beating the Ultra Beasts? One million dollars. Oh, that was nice. That was very, very nice. Like I got that after that. I was like, oh man, I never have to. Like the funny thing is, I just like scrimped and saved in order to um, buy all the TMs because I was doing the guide for that. So I was buying all the TMs for the uh, different stores, and I was I just bought them all. So I've still not gone below a million dollars because I bought everything I really needed. <laughs> Like, thanks, Looker. You were useful for once. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I got the hell out of my hotel. <laughs> yeah, it's. I'm so glad that you that that made it all worth it because you figured, okay, it's just going to be something that you do to get the Pokemon, and that's it. It's just like, no, they pay you for your work, which is a rarity in Pokemon, granted, but like they pay you for your work, and then you get to, um, and then you don't basically trying to buy. Um, Trying to buy TMs is not an issue anymore. I had I have yeah. plenty of money left after getting all. Yeah, the TMs. but then you got to fill out a W yeah. nine. <laughs> uh, they probably took a lot of that off taxes. It was supposed to be one point five million, and you know, yeah. exchange rate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Alolan the Alolan Pokemon dollar is not doing very well right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh boy. Um, so. Music. Oh, what did you guys think of the music this time around? Because honestly, this was kind of underwhelming to me musically. I generally enjoyed it, but nothing immediately sticks out to me. The only song I can think of that I think is outstanding is the Pony Canyon theme, which is awesome. I will say mm-hmm. um, that it, that is a good theme. I also like the Sea Folk Village at uh, during the day. Night's pretty good as as well. Um, I, I think there's a lot of good songs in here that really fit the mood of the play piece. They might not stand out like as memorable pieces, but I, they set the mood so well that I still really enjoyed them. And it's yeah, just... I think I agree with Derek there. And just on your uh, Pony Canyon tangent, uh, Ted, uh, I couldn't help but play Stone Tower Temple over that while I was going through that dungeon. <laughs> nah. <laughs> it's just it was just kind of a. Uh, uh, I'm I'm very spoiled when it comes to Pokemon music because Gen two and five I think have some of the best video game soundtracks of all time. So why don't we have blue and red champion battle remixes? <laughs> oh, that 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 legitimately makes me very very sad because <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean you, you I mean you, you remix blue's general theme, which is you know better than nothing. I'll give them that. Yeah, but like uh, why? <laughs> 
Just why? <laughs> it, it, it's like they're the two. There's like besides the main theme, they're probably the two most well known themes from Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's uh, it's a shame, but it also like I said, I generally really like the music. Some of the towns really stood out to me. Uh, so like Seafolk Village, the most by far. That is my favorite song in the game. Uh, I think just generally, Team Team Skull's theme was great. Their battle theme was awesome. Whoa, Guzma whoa, was Team Skull. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, that that song's great. The um, I get what you're going for. I guess the only thing is is that for me is that, I, and I've gone on this tangent before. The fact that they're still using MIDI files uh, and these this kind of general instrument quality for Pokemon, I find really annoying because. You got a, Pokemon stars. <laughs> it, I, I personally, I, I don't know why Nintendo can't get an orchestra for all of its games right now. You're the, you're the biggest video game company on the planet. Pokemon, in particular, is the biggest RPG on the face of the earth, and you're gonna still kind of half-ass the musical uh, quality when games like Etrian Odyssey, which are piddly little uh, Atlas niche games. Uh, can do full orchestras. Uh, it's I just I don't I don't get it. Or like Persona can get like full pop stuff going. Full pop stuff, real singers, real guitars, things like that. You know. So, mm. eh, yeah, yeah. One t- I, I, one I one touch one touch one touch I did like though is that the uh, champion quote unquote battle against Cook is actually your theme. Mm-hmm. It is. You're technically really the is. you're technically the champion at that point. Yeah, that's your theme. You are the champion. Oh yeah, does that play whenever you fight any of the the rematches? Because I haven't done that yet personally. Um, I think so. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Um, I think that that's really cool. And it is they do. St- and no, it's not Queen. Everyone. Yeah. One thing I do find <laughs> cool though is that when you do start that th- song, it plays the Pokemon. Ba 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 ba. I think that's really awesome. Um, yeah. It all worked. It all worked out re- really well. Yeah, not uh, like I, I'm just gonna have to agree with Derek. Nothing stands out, but I enjoyed the music while I was playing the game. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't hate any of the music. I should. I should stress that nothing was. Nothing was displeasing. It's just I wish that it could have been better. I suppose mm-hmm. is the is a better way to put it. Um, also, graphically, I do think... I know we touched on this earlier. The game does look pretty nice for a 3DS game. I just wish that the slowdown wasn't an issue. And, uh, you know, it still bothers me that they just decided no 3D at all. Um, I know that the game would not run at more than two frames per second if you did turn on the 3D <laughs> in some situations. Well, to be fair, Ted, you're also, like, one of the few people I know who actually uses 3D for anything, so... <laughs> but the the, the 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 console's called the goddamn 3DS, you know? Like, I don't care. <laughs> I missed the part where they added goddamn to it. <laughs> uh, the Nintendo goddamn 3DS trademark. Uh, it's the the like the like 16th variation of the 3DS. CDNN 3DS. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Rolls right uh, off the tongue. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it didn't bother me that much. I, I don't generally don't use 3D. I didn't even use the 3D much in X and Y. Well, in X and it's... Y, you couldn't turn the 3D on except for in battles in very and, uh, specific dungeons. And like three frames per second. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, it, it's just not something they're working with. And it's not going to be an issue because if Stars is on the Switch, well, we don't have to worry about 3D anyway. So why put in the extra effort, I guess? <laughs> Especially when the, the, game, the game's already struggling to handle the, the double battles and whatnot. So, um, again, I, I, I like the design of the world. Each island felt oh, very Oh, yes. Yes, yes. I agree. Uh, I, 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 heard... I never got confused as to where I was. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing that I like particularly is is that um, I love Gen 5, uh, but you are going in a straight line throughout that entire game. You go up, and then you go around the circle. It's very, very basic. I like that, and it doesn't feel like a real place um, in in that kind of way. Mm-hmm. These feel these felt like real lived in islands, and the fact that you're not going in a straight line, you kind of twist and turn all over the islands. Um, and there's a lot of little events that are happening that have very little significance to the plot, like the guy in How Ali City. I cannot pronounce any of these. Holy, holy, holy! The guy with the grimer who wants you to pick up the trash, or the uh, the the Tauros that is being too feisty, or the um, Pukimuku. Uh, yeah, the yeah, Pukimuku, the Pukimuku Chucky. Toss. Like, there's so many little events going on throughout the area that makes it feel very lived in, 
And it's much more interesting getting some things like TMs or certain items through stuff like that rather than just finding them on the ground all the time. Well, I, I liked also how it's not just when people address you, you're not just a trainer, you're you're a trial goer. And people are well aware of the trial goers and they would kind of journey you're on. They have volunteers uh, helping out and all this stuff. It's not just sort of like, eh, it's in the background. No, this, this is a major event and people treat it as such. And that made it feel more important almost. Like, People knew what you were out for, out to do. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. Mm-hmm. This one thing that kind of, I don't want to say bugged me, but kind of had me a bit curious, though. Uh, why do all the women have such massive hip sway in this game? Um, <laughs> it's Hawaii. <laughs> I don't know. I, I guess. <laughs> At least they, the, the, swimmer, the swimmers, uh, the male swimmer is a beefcake this time around. <laughs> so oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of the trainers, though, with the whole line of I. I think I love the detail they did because, like, one uh, fighter guy was doing sit-ups and he didn't see me until he sat up. (laughs) Nice. So, yeah, they put in really nice detail with that. Like, I heard of someone else was looking for the swimmer who was doing, like, lean-over stretches and she saw you through her legs. (laughs) That's awesome. Oh, man. Uh, Oh, man. It's, It's... Really nice touches like that. Like, there's so many little attention to, uh, attention to detail. Did you? I, I have seen people uh, complain about the linearity of the game. How you were definitely railroaded along a path. That's been Did Pokemon you, since Gen Five. Like, I think Gen Four had a little bit of linear. Gen Three and Gen Four have done that too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So really, Gen Two and Gen One are really the only semi non-linear Pokemon games. So it, it mm. didn't really bother me. It's not a prop like, because the game doesn't penalize you, like, even when it should, for going around and exploring. Because uh, I did that a lot. Like, if yeah, I, did- I did too. And it just says, hey, this is a dangerous route. Once you've shown you got mm-hmm. this, we'll let you through. Yeah, yeah. so the, the game it, doesn't... It, it's, it's, it's not stupid reasons like, today we are dancing for no reason. Tomorrow we will disappear for no reason. Uh, there, there are a few <laughs> of that, but thankfully they're more limited to the beginning of the game. Like the the stupid guy Friggin in the Stoutland. Stoutland. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The Stoutland needs to search everything. It's like, I, fuck I, off, dude. I don't <laughs> mind a game being linear as long as it's entertaining. Uh, um, You know, it, it, the game... One thing, I think, this is one of the best paced Pokemon games we've had in a really long time. Because one of the biggest issues with Gen 6 was is that the pacing was very slow. Like You, would you, mean, say, how you, got, you mean how you had like the first gym and like, no time at all, but then the... Second gym was, like, three hours later. Yeah, and then you would do nothing but gym battles for, like, a good six hours, you know? The the pacing in mm-hmm. Gen 6 was all over the place, so I was really glad that in Gen... Um, that's why I was really glad in this game they, they, they have a really solid pace throughout, and it's... I, I never I was... got bored. I never got bored of the main quest. Like, there are some times where it's just like, hey, I'd rather be exploring right now, so I'm just going to take a little bit of time off from the main quest, but I never... I was never I was never dreading doing the next trial challenge or exploring the next team skull segment or or whatever. It was very mm. brisk and it was very brisk and the forty hours went by in a blink of an eye. So I, I like also how once you got to the second half of Ula Ula Island, the events sort of naturally went into each other. Like you went to Acerola's trial and you got back from Acerola's trial. The p- kids Pokemon were kidnapped by Team Skull. You go off to t- fight Team Skull and take down uh, Po Town. You get back, you find out that Plumeria helped kidnap Lily. Then you yeah. go to the, to the assault on Aether Paradise and it's like, ah, ah, so much <laughs> going on. <laughs> it's yeah. like there's no no break. And then you finally get to Pony Island. It's like, okay, can breathe again. And you get the new and improved Lily, which again, great character moment there to see her like try to become stronger and like really live up the freedom and whatnot i loved i loved lily's redesign i hope that in a i hope that in, if they do if the pokemon stars rumor is real i hope that after the game we do get a fight with lily because i think that that would be i think that that's really where her character arc should go like like one of her things is that she doesn't want to see pokemon get hurt which is fine and all but I also mm-hmm. think that she, part of getting, I think this isn't something that they take, this isn't something that they really spell out in the game at all, but part of getting stronger is going through pain. So I feel like it does make sense, because she says she wants to become a trainer and whatnot, that like you would kind of finish the arc between her and you with a 
with a with a battle. It makes it makes sense thematically to me. So I, here, I I do wonder if we do get a Pokemon Stars, if we'll visit Kanto because they talk about her going to Kanto to. And you find out uh, through conversations and whatnot that the reason that she ended up deciding to go to Kanto is because they're in search of Bill. Because yeah. her mother is still infected by uh, Nihil Ego. And since Bill combined himself with the Pokemon and was able to Way separate back himself, in Gen 1. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's what they're going to go visit. And I, I'd love to go back to Kanto and revisit. I'd love to go to other regions as well, but I Kanto is... Like 95% there. of the mentions of other regions in this game are all Kanto, but obviously for yeah. 20th anniversary. Yeah, they, yeah. They, have a, they have a hand... Like, there's like two or three Johto references, a handful of Sinnoh references... And like Helen. um, Hol- yeah, Helen. They don't really re- uh, reference in Nova very much, but there's a lot of Gen Five Pokemon, so I don't really mind that too much. Um, mm-hmm. uh, one thing is though, is if they do bring back Kanto, this is my Gen Two fanboy showing up. But Johto's literally five feet to the left. Let us explore <laughs> there too, <laughs> please. Uh, for, when, yeah. for when that game gets its 20th anniversary. Yeah. For Gen Eight. Uh, Gen- there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, That'd be cool just to go back to it. Also wondering what they'll build in those places. Like they had those all those construction sites in the various towns. I'm like, what's going up on there? Yeah, it's yeah, man. The game the game is just this is the most fun I've had with Pokemon since the original Black and White. And like I know that I'm one of the people. I don't know if it's a minority that like Black and White uh one more than Black and White two. No, I like I like Black and White one more. Okay. Yeah, I do too. It's okay. It's just John. John just has really weird taste. Okay. Well, I think I, I like Gen One because I like them both, but I, I tend to like Gen One more. But the reason I like both is because Gen One you get all new Pokemon. It was a fresh start. It felt so nice to go into a cave and not have to worry about Zubat constantly. And then you got Gen when you got the Black and White two. All of a sudden, it wasn't the same old thing because now you have the Pokemon mixed up. If they were already mixed and up, and, and, Black and, and White and, one, and, and like eighty percent of the game is the exact same shit you did last time. Exactly. If the Pokemon were mixed up like they were in Black and White 2, it would not be nearly as impressive. Black and White 2 would be much more, yeah, much less impressive, much less interesting, I think. Well, one, I do think that one of the things that they did take from Black and White 2 that I think works is the variety of Pokemon. Because one thing about Black and White 2 that I think uh, is nice is, is that you do have a large, large, large variety of Pokemon that you're able to that you're able to um, find at any given time. No, you're, uh, not, you're not you're not stuck with bland normal type cannon fodder for the first hour. Yeah, mm. it's um, you're you're given a lot of interesting choices, um, and that's the same thing here. Like that's why I want to do. Uh, like I'm actually very interested in doing a Nuzlocke of Gen S- uh, Seven because Gen Seven like. Not only is the game not super hard, so I feel like I could actually make my way through it. Um, I've I've heard about a lot of people at least going in blind, having some trouble with their nuzzle. Yeah, but so. with uh, but with proper preparation, I think it's very it seems very doable. And um, there's a lot of like your team could literally be anything, and mm-hmm. it, it just seems like a lot of it seems like it'd be a very interesting challenge. So that's why I'm um, I'm interested in, in doing one. Um, of course, it's probably, I do, I'm not sure when I would do it. I, I do, this is, I will say though, this is one of the first Pokemon games in a long time where I've beaten it and I'm kind of like, I want to do another playthrough. Like, just to mm-hmm. try out a different team combination. Uh, you know? Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I totally get that. I can't think of the last, the last Pokemon game I can think of that I really wanted to do that before was like, Leaf Green, I think, was the last Pokemon game I really wanted to do it for. Um... Not, not even really Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Although in that case, that's just because that game has so much content to it. By the time you're at the end, you're just you're done. Then, done. That, <laughs> that Gen Four battle. E. Slow. Yeah, it's so slow. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of the battles, what do you guys think of the Z moves? They're nice. I enjoy them. They're not. They're they're, okay. they're they're not overpowered, but I just wish you could skip the animation. Yeah, or at least a quick animation or a fast forward button or something. Uh, oh, I mean, oh, that's I mean, okay. I mean there are no notes of the round, but <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's okay. Here's something. Um, one thing that Pokemon has been doing since about Gen Four and Gen Five is is that a lot of the trainers you meet on the routes have gotten a lot less Pokemon. Because in Gen One, Two, and Three, you most of the trainers you would find in routes, at least by the one third to halfway point of the game, would have like three or four Pokemon. 
Um, mm-hmm. And I kind of miss how long those fights were. Um, and, you know, it's something that you just I didn't really think about too much when playing through Gen 5 and 6. Um, but... Like, I, I kind of, I noticed that, like, hey, the, the gym fights and the, the, like, the rival trainer fights, they've only got, like, two Pokemon. Sh- these fights should be longer. But, in particular, when you, uh, when you add Z-moves to the equation, I feel like it's really pronounced, because if you, you if can you, only if use you, one... If once for battle, and if they only can, have one Pokemon, I might as well just fucking use it. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, I, I decided not to use my Z-moves I, I did, too, mostly just because I didn't want to watch the animation the entire, all over and over. <laughs> exactly. And you, you don't they, need to me, it. they were sort of desperation moves, if but, I needed them. Yeah, but it's... You have to think a lot more carefully about when you use that Z-move, if the trainers... Like, even if the trainers just got three Pokemon, you know, and, like, if the... I know that there really aren't gym leaders in this one. I, mean, I, I, I had like, to really think about it for, like, the Elite Four and Kukui. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. by the end game when you started getting you started getting a couple of trainers with like maybe four or five Pokemon. Well, not even five. Like random trainers, I don't think ever really had more than four. Or, or like uh, or like Lusamina's final boss. Yeah, but once you got <laughs> to the very end game and trainers started to have more Pokemon, then you really had to think about it. Um, but yeah, that's really the only thing is that I wish that there were a few more Pokemon. For more of the the main, uh, for more of the main game, I, so I do admit I like it more than Mega Evolution because it actually makes every Pokemon at least be able to do something. Yeah, any poke, any Pokemon viable, yeah. and also you know this is just me. I also I don't like most of the Mega Evolution designs, so you know using one doesn't make, for example, like Gengar look really stupid. How now, to make how so. to make the already popular Pokemon even more broken? Yeah, yeah, that was that was my biggest issue with Mega Evolution. It's just like, okay, this is a chance for Pokemon like uh, Stantler or Tauros Dunsparce or, or Tauros or Pokemon with, well, maybe not Dunsparce, but you, you know what I'm talking about. Pokemon that were never really great get a chance to actually be viable in a competitive scene. And, you know, instead, all the Pokemon that everybody already loves, like uh, Garchomp, Salamence... Charizard gets um, two. Charizard gets two. And, I mean, granted, there were some Pokemon that did get, that were less popular, that did get some, like Kangaskhan and Beedrill, for instance. But it wasn't, Mm -hmm. it always felt more like, okay, these are the Pokemon that people like, so let's capitalize on these, as opposed to getting people excited about Pokemon that they might not have given a second thought to. Which, (laughs) I... I would uh, kind of, kind of an aside, not fully related, but you mentioned Tauros. Uh, I will say, when I was playing through uh, Sun and Moon, I caught Tauros, and you know how you get that Pokemon thing that pops up, and you see their evolution line. It totally threw me off when I caught Tauros, and there was an open no, it's, spot it, it's, next it's, to it's it. Melting. Like, exactly, I found that out later, but I'm like, oh my god, does Tauros actually have an evolution in this game? And then I was uh, I found out later it's like that caught the mill tank I'm like son of a bitch <laughs> I was like that would have been so cool to have a surprise Taurus uh, evolution well to be fair to, to be fair Taurus's evolution should have been Buffalo to begin with but true enough <laughs> well the, the the funny thing is is that I this might have changed but I don't believe it's actually possible to get a Taurus if you breed a Taurus and a mill tank together dude because they're technically different species <laughs> so uh, mm-hmm. yeah um, they might have changed that more recently but i'd have to but as far as i remember you know i'm sure that any mistake we've made the comment section is already corrected yeah. so uh, although uh, uh just to go back a little bit on what derek brought up what did you guys think of alolan forms and just as a concept for ongoing games I like yeah it. i do too it's a good way to mix up old pokemon to be interesting in different regions I've- I had I the two Alolan forms I used on my team was a Lolan Muck and a Lolan Doug Trio. Loved them both. Uh, I uh, had Prince Alolan... Adam. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, they, they were fast and having that steel type was really nice. Uh, I will say though I did try ha- using a Lolan Marowak on my team and he sucked. Marowak I was so disappointed uh, with Mar- how much it sucked. Marowak has Marowak you need to find a thick club. If you give him a thick club, he his attack doubles. You need a thick club to run Marowak. It's not possible without it. <laughs> yeah. It's fa- also the fact that it wasn't learning. I had to teach it a fire move, and it still barely learned any fire moves or ghost moves to fight, despite being a fire ghost type. I was like, what the heck are you? You're in your all defense, no attack, and you're not even that great at defending anything. So I, I dropped yeah. him. <laughs> but I, I just like the idea, though. It's a good way to kind of mix up old Pokemon. 
I just, mm-hmm. if they're going to do it again, they need to do stuff other than Gen 1. Well, I think, I think there was because... the, the idea was that it's the 20th anniversary, let's stick to Gen 1, the Pokemon people already know and like. And if it goes over well, Gen 8 or whatever, we'll start mixing in other Gens. Hmm. I, I get that. Yeah, but makes it makes a lot of sense. Unless if they completely drop the concept, like Mega Evolution, and we never see it again. Well, Mega Evolution's there, just post game. And like, <laughs> yeah, not brought but, up like, at all. Yeah, but we don't get. Yeah, but we don't get any new. We don't get any new. Uh, Megas. Poker, uh, Mega Evolutions though. So. Yeah, it, it's going to be interesting to see what they do f- f- moving on. Like, where they add more Z crystals, like specialized Z crystals. Where they add new, new Mega Evolutions. Where they add new Alolan forms. What can we expect? And uh, I, I'm still hoping for like either a far fetched evolution or a mega far fetched, because <laughs> I love that little bird and he never gets getting any attention love. for that. Oh, that would be quite far fetched, actually. Oh boy! But um, yeah, it was. I I, I think. Uh, Gameplay wise, it all worked out. I, I enjoyed the po- the new Pokemon. I enjoyed the uh, new alone forms. Z moves, while I used them sparingly, would definitely brought an interesting element of strategy to the to the whole proceeding. They're just really good games. I think. Yeah. Is is the thing? Like it's. I would definitely. It's, it, it's hard to say because it's only been a week, but it's definitely above three, four, and six for me. In terms um, of favorite yeah, I don't. I'm not sure where I would place it compared to five and two. One, I don't really put yeah. anywhere because it's just kind of that weird first step sort of thing. So yeah. I don't really put it anywhere, but it's definitely on the top half. Yeah, that's, I agree. It's, it's, you know, you can, you can already tell, like, I love this game. Like, uh, I can already, I can already say that, that it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. But uh, it, especially considering that it's so different than the, a traditional Pokemon game, it's hard to rank it against. Uh, a Gen two or a Gen five, which are our particular favorites, because they're it's they're not similar in so many ways. So it's it's bizarre, I guess is is the big thing. So yeah, yeah. I, I've gone on record to say that I Gen six is my Gen not Gen six Gen seven is my new favorite generation. Granted, that's still very yeah. fresh, but I'm looking back and I think I like the changes more. I I like the changes that it brought to the game much more than you know. Uh, to, to I, a great degree, I, I, I would need that, more time. I, I, I would need more time before I can definitively say that. I yeah, uh, I totally get that. What I will say is that I hope that they bring up this freshness. Some of these, like I hope that they keep things fresh for the next installation and don't just copy Sun and Moon after the fact. Like I don't think we need trials to do trials specifically again. But I also don't want to see gyms either. I would like to see a different take on. On it for mm-hmm. an eventual Gen Eight or or whatever. Um, I would like ah. to see a similarly re- laid out region in terms of the organic feeling of it, but I don't want to see islands. Islands, uh, for instance, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think a I think gyms would work best now and anymore as sort of a second quest. Yeah, that's a great idea. And really like. Here's a big challenge. Get through these gyms. They are going to be a challenge for you. Like, let the main game be what you know, the normal Pokemon difficulty. Ramp it or, up. Or we maybe delegate for... them to an actual side quest. Like, something we you don't have to I, do, but there's a gym, and it's like, oh, if you want to test your skill, you can go to these gyms, and if you get all eight gym badges or whatever, you could do something cool at the end of the game. But that's yeah, not that the main be, focus. That would actually... Both of those are great idea. Like, I like... I like your idea, Ryan, because that would be a great way to, like, keep your levels up if you were playing the game so you don't feel like you have to stop every trainer on the way. But uh, Derek's idea, like, I feel like one thing that Pokemon has always been missing is, like, Pokemon battles where you're fighting Pokemon that are, like, level 80 and higher. Like, you're lucky to get a level 70 trainer high red. in some games. <laughs> yeah, high red. Yeah. Um, so, like, consistent challenge. like, And also, like, it would help raising Pokemon up to level 100 be an interesting task, you know, because that's always just kind of a slog. So, yeah, those are both great ideas. I, I don't, I agree, You sh- we don't necessarily have to throw out the idea for the, the. you don't have to throw gyms out particularly, but... Cause it's just, it's, it, like, I don't think they, it, I think it's fine this once because they're trying to do something so different, but I think it's such a big kind of staple of the series, you can't really get rid of it. 
Yeah, that makes that makes mm. a lot of sense. It'd be like um, it'd be like Mario without power ups in a sense. Yeah, the game would still be fine, but it's like that's but, power ups are such a big part of what makes the game. So yeah, that's yeah. a that's a good way to put it. Um, so is there anything else we really needed to cover? Um, I'm trying to think because yeah, like we've been that. going for a decent amount of time. Yeah. Although, <laughs> although it's we're like, used to much longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're usually a lot more uh, talkative. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, mostly just side things. I, I think I uh, haven't covered yet, like like the Pokemon Refresh versus Pokemon. I like ref- I like Refresh I mean, a lot better because it's less tedious. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, you can you can feed them a rainbow bean and they're instantly three or four hearts, yeah. and you don't have to worry about it anymore. Mm. So, um, I got all my team. Uh, Affection is like I didn't even bother with affection very much at all in my X and Y playthrough. It's broken as shit. Uh, yeah. I'm just gonna mention because yeah, it, um, it, it, it's so much easier to do this game. It's not it's, it's not incredibly like, tedious. You're not playing that stupid yarn game over and over because it's the only one that's <laughs> yeah. worth it. Oh yeah, that that definitely helped a lot. I mean, yeah, I mean, it does make the the, the game easier, but it also makes sense to interact with your Pokemon and pet them. And the animations are so adorable in this game. Uh, uh, don't, um, so I showed Pokemon Refresh to Catherine, and I, I had her pet Beware, and it took me, like, 20 minutes to yank the 3DS out of our hands and be like, okay, we're gonna play a real part of the game now. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah. yeah. Good old, good uh, old Pet Beware. Uh, he's, he's adorable. He's one of the best, uh, he's one of my favorite He's adorable, Pokemon but also team. freaking scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's actually, you know, especially, especially I, don't in, watch... I don't watch the anime much, but I've seen clips of Team Rocket with oh, the and Lola. It's like he just keeps bringing them back to his cave and not letting them leave. <laughs> yeah, I need to catch up on that, but it, um, it seems like the Sun and Moon anime has been pretty good so far. Uh, I've seen a clip where like uh, Ash sees a Beware and he's like he's waving to it, and the Beware was like hi, and then they're all happy, and then the Beware like accidentally knocks down a tree, and his face shifts to like one of sheer terror. <laughs> that was really funny. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's really great what they're doing, and I, I I think they're having a lot of fun with the designs this time. And, and as a lot of people have mentioned, this game can get kind of dark. Like we already have like the the child abuse angle, Mimi, Mimi with the main story, the Mimikyu stuff, the the some of the poker the Pokedex entries, like oh, the, the, uh, interesting way for Primeape to die. Turtonator Tur- <laughs> um, literally chops up uh, Corsola and eats them. Oh yeah. uh, no no! Uh, Toxapex leaves a trail of Corsal abyss. Oh yeah, that's, that, that's, that's, that's Toxapex. My bad. Yeah, Toxapex, and it's it's crazy how scary some of these are. And have you guys done the um, side quest to get the EV? Uh, um, I've not started e- it. Yet, I but... couldn't find the Vaporeon. Is uh, uh is the principal in the uh, in the trainer school the Vaporeon trainer? Uh, no, it's not the principal. It's the old lady. Oh, okay. I'll have to on top look. on the third floor. I have a guide for it, Ted. <laughs> but, but I yeah, don't that, need no I, stinking guide. I, 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 <laughs> you just I, asked me the guy, the guy who made the guide. So yes, you do. It, no, that's talking with friends. That's different. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's just whole being old sucks. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole thing. Like they're all talking about like leaving, a, like either they're dying, dead, or old days, or just. Like, my God, somebody, like, what's going on over at Game Freak? Somebody's having an ex- existential crisis. <laughs> no, I, no, I Anna's so. over there for a few days. Who? <laughs> uh, Anna, the guy who made Ava. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, now that makes more sense. That's all That's all we need. <laughs> oh, yeah, he man. decided, to, he decided yeah. to walk in the offices one day, just didn't leave. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say, I, uh, my, what, what's your... I'm guessing, Ted, your favorite new Pokemon is Beware. Um, well, actually, it's... Well, hold on. I'm going to go through my, my team right now. Um, so I my team was actually um, mostly uh, a co- half and half old and new Pokemon. So I, I, I Popplio, so Primarina is uh, on my team. Beware, and also a Minior, because I caught a shiny I caught a shiny Minior. Whoa, really? It was fantastic. Uh, yeah, yeah, really. I, I, post, I posted it on Twitter. Oh, I didn't see it, um, so... Yeah, I caught a shiny Minior. Nice. Um... But I think honestly, like I really loved Cutie Fly and Ribombi. Oh yeah, Rib- so Ribombi's really adorable. Ups- I was really mm-hmm. upset that I put him uh, on the tr- on the on the on the bench. Uh, but there's a lot of there's a lot of Pokemon that I've warmed up to, like Drampa. 
I was kind of like, eh, when I saw it. Never the, ending um, story. <laughs> but I, I, I'm not liking, in my version. <laughs> but I, I'm liking him a lot more now. Um, uh, in terms of just adorableness, Komala, like, oh, that guy's, that guy's, I just want to give him a hug. Um, <laughs> um, I, I like Rock Ruff. Cupid I, Muko, I actually like I like Rock Ruff and Lincoln Rock, if only because I'm Lincoln Rock, because I'm a big dog guy, but... Oh, yeah, Wishy Washy! I, like I really want to run Wishy Washy as well, but I already I was I was set on Poplio, and I already had a water tape. So yeah, that's what's with me because I also really like Pukumuku, and I also really liked uh, um, Mimikyu. I, 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 I use again. I use Mimikyu on my team. Nice. How was he? He's a defensive wall. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's it, you. I because not only does he not, lo- is, not only does he actually just take a hit, which by the way I forgot about and use my Z move first turn just to try and knock him out early. It's like <laughs> oops, <laughs> <laughs> denied. Yeah. But yeah. it's like his his normal defense, special defense are so damn high. So it's like he's a massive it's, tank. Yeah, it's it's there's a lot of really interesting competitive uses. So like for Mimikyu, just being able to take any hit for free. Like, mm. like, like, like if that, you can predict they're going to use their Z move, switch it in and just make it worthless. Yeah. Yeah. Also, That'd be great. Also, I have Minior. When its shell is up, it's immune to status effects. Um, you, it can't nice. be status affected at, at, at Look, all. Oh, so if you could, looking, like, predict... looking at the uh, Pokedex on Serapy, I like if I were to get a Mario's right next to Mimikyu. <laughs> <laughs> the Pikachu of this region versus the not Pikachu. I, I do like to get a Mario <laughs> but... as a design, though. Uh, there's also Wimpod and Ghostly Applied who will instantly run away. Like, bait him, baton Retreat. pass. Uh, but also, I cannot find a what? Wimpod again. Like I, I accidentally killed. Oh, they're around. Oh no! Uh, but they'll they'll, sh- they'll show up on Pony Island uh, every so often. I have not been able to find another one. They don't. They're not spawning for me. I can't find one. Oh, that sucks. Oh yeah. What do yeah, you think of? Uh, I, I I want to raise one because Guzma's Galissiopod just impressed the hell out. Really? Of me. I really I that killed that be, thing like, easily. That could be a real challenge. Really, I oh, never that? had a problem with this Kalisapod. Oh, I, after my first battle with it, as soon as I got, um, uh, every time I came in, I would just immediately use Lycanroc's Z move and drop a rock on it. It's like, squish this bug, get it out of the way, because it gave me so much trouble the first time I fought it. <laughs> what do you think of the uh, four guardians that you can catch post game? Wait, oh, wait, they were wait, 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 by I... the way, fuck Tapu Koko for being post credits. <laughs> E, uh, yeah. Or, 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 like, um, per, per, I, I got no, I got it, it but, but it's yeah. like, don't make me have to restart like part of the Elite Four champion or whatever just to try and catch him again if something goes wrong. Mm-hmm. E, you want to know what? Well, was... there, there's a way to catch it. Yeah, but it, it's, too, it's, it's just I'm, as I'm annoying. It's yeah. Uh, one thing that like that that ending scene I already thought was about like five minutes longer than it needed to be. Well done. So... Everyone walking up and going, "Well done, son, guy." <laughs> yeah, but um. The, honestly, the one that annoyed me the most was Tapu Finny. Yeah, because they could they oh, yeah. heal and itself. Because they're, they're... The, yeah, they're... As, as I posted on Twitter earlier, because having legendaries that can heal themselves provide provide a unique and interesting challenge. I've got a rare Pokemon. Quote no one. Yeah, <laughs> I used my Master Ball on her. No, I I, I, I used it on Necromaza or Necrozma. Oh, Necromaza was, temp- was easy. I, yeah, I never actually used my Master Ball. I was so tempted with Tapu Finny though. But my whole theory, my whole fear eventually becomes is like. What other legendaries am I going to come across? They're going to be even harder. So, or like, or, or, or like, Ball, like, like the the No, I did. I did the Tapus after I did the Ultra Beast. Oh. So I was like, "This is this, this is, is it, the last so. one." So just use it. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm. And I played too yeah. many Pokemon games where the Master Ball just sat there gathering dust, and I'm like, well, "I well, could have saved myself a well, lot no, of I, time." Well, no, I just saw Necros <laughs> at the end of the Mas- Ultra Beast quest after I got the Tapus, and I was like, "Okay, this yeah. is probably the highest level we're ever going to see." I'll just use it now. And lo and behold, yeah. that was the last one you run into. So it's like, okay, that works. <laughs> the thing is, as, as annoying as they were, I never had to restart more than once. For I had to a few times for Feeny, but only because it kept healing itself. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, I got to whittle it back down. Oh, I killed it. Uh, uh, for Tapu Bulu, um, I had my uh, Talon Flame out. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I used my Absol with uh, with uh, Fall Swipe to get it down to 1 HP. I think he died. Uh, so I put out my Talon Flame so that he could tank some of its hits. He my, His Flame Body 
hit him. Burned. He got burned and died. <laughs> that happened trying to catch wild Pokemon so much. I would never get the flame body when it would actually be useful. But when I was trying to catch something, yeah, I would. I'd get it all the time. And yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I will. I will say one of my favorite new Pokemon though is definitely Vicavolt. Oh, that cheap bastard! I. Uh, he would honestly like. I learned a. Uh, the thing that annoys me though. You can't evolve Charger until Bug the... until you get to Vast Pony Pony Vanyan. I think they're I think they're like Vast how Pony it was. Canyon. <laughs> uh, it might be because what I did, what it's I like, hey, it's electric type with was... levitate and no stig. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I love that aspect of it. Um, and plus, it learned just so many. Also, different it's moves. really fast. Yeah, that too. And so the thing that uh, I. I noticed as soon as I evolved, it was like it was all physical with Charger Bug, and as soon as it becomes Vicavolt, it's all special. Like its special attack got a huge buff. Yeah, uh, Charger like, Bug. Oh, Charger Bug. I... A physical attack actually goes down when it evolves. Yeah, yeah. I had. I'm like, oh god, I, none of my moves are physical based for this thing because I was basing on Charger Bug. So I was so happy when I got to the uh, right before the Elite Four. And the hard scale person was there, and I immediately tossed in Vicavolt and went through and just relearned old moves and got like Bug Buzz and Thunderbolt and all these really good moves. And my Vicavolt is a beast. I love it. <laughs> yeah, when uh, I encountered that man. for a uh, Sophocles challenge, they could rock, crush it with a rock, please. <laughs> just don't even <laughs> give it a chance. I actually ran into a lot of trouble with electric types because I didn't have a gram this time. I didn't have any ground type Pokemon this time around, so. Um, what about the sand? Uh, what about really the sand cast? I... Uh, no, thank <laughs> you. I ran into electric types gave me some shit because I didn't have a good counter for them uh, on my on my team. Unfortunately, yeah, that was the way with me and grass types. That's why I think Lorantis also gave me so much trouble. I want to the... use Lorantis uh, for a playthrough, but I also it's just like I found a Petalil. and I've uh, despite being one of my favorite designs, I've never used Petalil in the little Gint. For a Gen mm-hmm. Five run, because like I would, I've like I've either used had Surviper on my team, or um, or I was running uh, Leave Any instead. So it's just like I've already had my Grass type quota filled. So it was so nice to be able to to run uh, to run uh, a Pokemon that I that I loved, but I never got a chance to fully use. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was very strange to me to have a team without a Psychic type on my on it. Because I'm so used to having a psychic type there, but I was also really determined not to use any old Pokemon. Yeah, for my first playthrough so... of any generation, I always use nothing but Newmon. Mm-hmm. I it's just I kind of well the the first like I'd say ten hours of the game, I was switching out Pokemon left and right. Like a lot of things, like whenever I saw a new Pokemon, I would add it to my team instantly, which is a fantastic change. They need to keep that uh, being able to either switch the Pokemon to your party or sw- send or send it to the box. That is beautiful <laughs> idea. Yeah. But I was switching out my team like crazy early on because I was just finding so many Pokemon that I really liked and I wanted to give a shot. I wanted to give a shot. So yeah, it's um, I did end up using half and half just because there were so many Pokemon that I really enjoyed from old generations, but never gave a full playthrough like Absol. And um, or Talonflame, who I never used in Gen Six, and I wanted to give a real try. Although Talonflame, honestly, is probably—I'm sorry, Mortar, but you're probably the least useful member of my team uh, right <laughs> what, now. What? No Bravebird? So, no Bravebird um, spam? I've got. Uh, well, here's the thing: I've already got Flare Blitz on him, so I don't want two moves that cause that much recoil <laughs> on him. <laughs> and really, Flare Blitz is really just there so that I can do. Um, have it be its Z move and do a massive amount of damage, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, Anything else, or? Well, you know, we did say that like 20 minutes ago, True. so we might come up with <laughs> something random in the meantime. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Honestly. Time to start preparing for Gen 8. <laughs> Get that analysis yeah. out. Mr. Game Explain. What tish? <laughs> no. Uh, what well, could? Gen- I'm, are there, I'm are there, hits, are there hits in Gen-, well, Gen 8 and Gen 7? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I w- it was interesting, I will say, to go through and seeing like, oh, I got this right. Oh, I got this right. Oh, I got this wrong. Oh, I got this right. And seeing how well I did with my analysis. <laughs> oh, my God. Relicant, stop calling for help. Jesus Christ. Oh, so we're going to uh, uh, end this video on the way it started. Nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ted bitching about that. Okay. Uh, uh. 
seriously though, they're great games. If you have been out of the Pokemon loop for a while and want to get back in, or if you're one of the three people who've never tried Pokemon before, I'd say that this is a good time to jump in. So, mm-hmm. um, gr- great games. I give them a thumbs up. What Ty said. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I already get yep. yeah, my review. I said I loved it. It still stands true. Yep. All right. So, uh, thanks for joining us, everyone. And uh, I guess we'll talk about whatever Pokemon stuff happens to come next, whatever it may be. Pokemon Stars revealed for 2018. 18. <laughs> 2017. Yeah, better, it 2017. better be 2017. Yeah, it's 2017, dude. If it's if it's coming out, it's 2017. January 1st, 2017. <laughs> no, the Switch isn't even out yet. I know, so you'll just have the cart and you'll be staring at it, not able to play it. Fantastic. Oh man, what what if they decide to reveal it at their review, like that event where they're showing off all the stuff about the Switch, and like al- along with it is Pokemon Stars. Well, they better because I don't sure know any real games pe- about it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that would piss people off or not because they just bought a Pokemon game, you know. Uh, well, technically, people did find out about Pokemon Stars the day of Pokemon Sun and Moon's release, and it's still doing well. So hmm. okay, but whatever. Um, I don't know. See everyone next time. (laughs)